Jumping straight to the in-game settings, starting with display mode. As always, I recommend you guys playing in full screen as it gives you the least amount of input lag. And then double check that your screen refresh rate and display resolution are both set correctly and that dynamic resolution is disabled. Jumping down to sync every frame, otherwise known as V-Sync, it's very important that this is disabled. It adds a lot of input latency. I know that having this enabled can fix some of those screen tearing issues, but it is just not worth it. For custom frame rate limit i like to set this to custom and then click on advanced and bring the gameplay custom frame rate limit all the way up and then set the other two options to 60 that way in the menus my computer isn't running at its full capabilities for brightness here it's pretty self-explanatory just adjust it accordingly to the chart on the right side of your screen display gamma we want this at 2.2 nvidia highlights we want this disabled and then nvidia reflex low latency we want this on enabled moving on over to the quality tab field of view we want want this all the way up to 120 as you're going to be much more aware of your surroundings since you're going to be able to see a lot more and then click advanced here and make sure ADS field of view is set to affected it's going to be much easier to control recoil on affected now if you are used to independent switching to affected is going to take a little time to get used to camera movement make sure this is all the way down to 50 percent otherwise your screen's going to be shaking all over the place and that hurts visibility for the majority of you you're going to want render resolution set to 100 but if you play on a 1080p monitor and you have a 3070, a 3080, or a 3090, try setting render resolution to 121. You're going to get a much clearer image and you're going to take hardly any hit to your FPS. Streaming quality, we want this on normal. And then I personally have texture resolution on high. I've noticed between low and high, I only lose a few FPS and the game just looks a lot more crisp. So what I recommend doing is putting texture resolution as high as you can put it without this VRAM usage bar on the bottom right going into the red. If you notice this bar going into the red, put it down as setting. If you have a little more wiggle room, try turning it up as setting. Texture filter anisotropic, we do want this on normal. And then particle quality is a weird one. So when you put particle quality on high, you actually get more FPS as you can see here, which is a bit weird, but I'll take it. We get to put a setting on high and gain FPS. Bullet impacts and sprays is gonna be personal preference. There's no difference. In in terms of performance with this enabled or disabled and then tessellation we do want this disabled and then dismemberment and gore effects again same thing as bullet impacts and sprays it's just personal preference but i like to leave it enabled on demand texture streaming we do want this disabled otherwise the game's going to be downloading textures to our computer in the background which could cause some lag scrolling down to filmic strength we're going to want to leave this all the way up to one and then we're going to want to turn film grain all the way down to zero and then dlss I leave this disabled. Yes, DLSS can boost your performance, but it looks just absolutely horrible on Warzone. I shouldn't say it looks horrible, but it hurts your visibility a lot because it basically looks like you just took Vaseline and just threw it at your monitor. But if you really, really, really need the performance gain after switching all the settings in this video and you are playing on 1440p or 4K, you could try DLSS. If you're playing at 1440p, I would recommend only using quality. And then if you're using 4K, I would only recommend using balance. Anti-aliasing is a huge performance hog and I recommend turning this off. As you can see here, you lose about 25 FPS by putting this all the way up to its highest setting, which is just a ridiculous amount of FPS to lose over one setting in the game. Yes, you do kind of get this shimmering effect in the trees and on some edges, it looks a little jagged or whatnot, but once you get used to it, it is worth it. It is not worth your game looking a little more smooth is the best way to describe it for 25 less FPS. Not to mention having anti-aliasing off helps your visibility a lot. Depth of field, we do want this disabled, world motion blur and weapon in motion blur we want all that disabled that is just hurting visibility a lot and then shadow map resolution is something i see a lot of people telling me to put it on high because they claim you get more fps and you're wrong as you can see on screen here i'm actually getting more fps with this setting on low and looking at the shadows here the difference in quality of the shadows really isn't all that noticeable so i would much rather take the performance gain cash spot shadows and cash sun shadows we want both of these settings 
enabled. And then particle lighting, we want this on low. Direct X ray tracing, we want this disabled. Now, if you are noticing that you can't change your anti-aliasing setting, it's because you have ray tracing enabled here. Ambient occlusion, we want disabled. And screen space reflection, we want disabled. For audio settings, this is what I use here, but I do have a full video covering all the audio settings for the best ways to improve footstep audio. So if you're interested in that, video will be linked in the description. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button. We're so close to 50,000 subscribers, which is just absolutely insane. So I'd really appreciate that. And just a reminder, I do stream almost every single morning over on Twitch. Link is in the description if you ever want to catch me live. Moving on to the NVIDIA control panel. We're here under the Manage 3D Settings tab, and I'm just going to scroll through all these settings really quick for you guys. Just get these all copied down. Moving on to the Change Resolution tab here. Just double check that you have the refresh rate set correctly. There's too many people I know that have been running their monitors at 60 hertz when they have 144 hertz or 240 hertz monitor. And then scroll down here and you're going to want to check use NVIDIA color settings. And then you're going to want to change the output dynamic range to full. And don't forget to apply your settings. Next, we're going to be clicking on adjust desktop color settings. And this is the reason I don't use NVIDIA filters anymore. You can get a pretty similar look to NVIDIA filters with these settings here. Now, these settings are going to be a little different for every single monitor. For example, digital vibrance I have at 75% and the saturation looks perfect on my monitor. But maybe for your monitor, it's just way too saturated. So maybe just turn it down to maybe like 60% or something. And vice versa, if you feel like you don't have enough vibrance or saturation in your game. Now, one thing I've noticed is that Caldera's lighting this season looks like absolute crap. And I've tried literally everything to fix that sun. There is really not much you can do besides turning down the brightness and contrast a lot, which yes, will help with the sun. But then as soon as you go inside a building, you're not going to be able to see a thing. So we're just kind of working with what we got here until Raven Software hopefully adjusts the sun and just the lighting overall on Caldera. But otherwise, these color settings just look absolutely incredible on Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep. Again, don't forget to click apply. And then we're going to move over to adjust desktop size and position. And we're going to want to switch scaling here to no scaling on all of our monitors. And then scrolling down here, just double check that your resolution and refresh rate is set correctly here. Now, a lot of people ask me about G-Sync. And personally, I don't recommend using G-Sync when you're playing any competitive FPS games. It does add a little bit of input lag, but it can make your game feel really smooth. For example, if you have a 240 hertz monitor and you're only getting 90 FPS, in that scenario, I would use G-Sync. But if you're using a 240 hertz monitor and you're getting like 170, 180 FPS, I wouldn't even bother with G-Sync as it's not worth losing that input latency. But then we're gonna go over to adjust video color settings and we're gonna wanna select with NVIDIA settings here. And then you're gonna wanna click on advanced and select full under the dynamic range. And then we are good to go in the NVIDIA control panel. Just don't forget to apply your settings. Please keep in mind, every time you update your graphics card drivers, some of your NVIDIA control panel settings are going to be reset. And a lot of you do ask me about what drivers are the best for Warzone. And honestly, I would just keep your drivers up to date. Some of you also ask if you should upgrade to Windows 11. And no, don't. It is not very good for gaming at the moment. I would definitely wait on that. Next thing I want you to do is go to your documents and then find your Call of Duty Modern Warfare file. Double click that and then double click on players and then double click on this ADV under underscore options file and you're going to be greeted with this notepad here under renderer worker count you're going to want to put this number here to half of whatever the number of cores you have for your cpu for example i have 16 cores in my cpu so i'm using eight if you have eight you would use four but don't put a number here that is lower than four so even if you have a six core cpu you want to use the number four don't use three if you don't know how to see how many cores your cpu has all you have to do is right click your taskbar here here and go to your task manager and then click on the performance tab and then click on CPU and it'll say right here how many cores you have in your CPU. And then we can close out of all this. Just double check that you saved the file and then close out of it. Then go to your search bar and type in game mode and you're gonna see game mode settings pop up right here. So click on that and it's gonna bring you to the screen. Now you wanna turn on game mode. From there, you're gonna see graphic settings on the right side, click on that. And under where it says hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, you're gonna wanna turn this on. Now, if you are a streamer and you're streaming 
gaming on the same PC that you're gaming on, do not turn this setting on. Otherwise, it's going to cause some issues with OBS. But from there, if you are a mouse and keyboard player, you're going to want to type in mouse and go to mouse settings here. And on the right side, you're going to see additional mouse options and it'll bring up this little menu here. And from here, you're going to want to click on pointer options and uncheck this here where it says enhance pointer precision. This is mouse acceleration and this is going to affect your muscle memory. We do not want that, especially in first person shooter games. We can close out of all that and then we're going to search background here in the search bar and you're going to see background apps pop up right here. And we're going to want to just check this off here at the top where it says let apps run in the background. Otherwise, all these apps are going to be running in the background at all times when we're gaming, which can hurt performance. The last thing you're going to want to do is open up Google Chrome. If you don't use Google Chrome, just click off the video, but click the subscribe button first. And in the top right hand corner, you'll see three little dots. So click on that and then click on settings. Now, once you get to settings on the left side here, you're going to see system. So click on that. And then at the top here is where it says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. Just make sure that is unchecked and then you are good to go. If there's anything you want to see me change or add to these settings videos, please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Here's the web. Peace.